taken two extra classes into the school because the demand is so high. That's obviously caused us issues around timetabling spaces in the school, making sure we have the right number of classrooms for all the children, and also making sure that their curriculum is the same and equal for all the children. So there are a number of issues that's caused. The National Audit Office predicts the problem will get worse, with an extra 250,000 places required by the autumn of next year. It says ministers need more information on whether spending to increase school capacity is proving effective. Local councils share the concern. The challenge is to make sure that there's enough money in the system, which at the moment we know there isn't, and that we don't see delays being caused by some of these bureaucracies that are in the school, getting in the way of providing those high quality school places. Labour accused the government of failing the next generation of pupils. But ministers say there's been a rapid increase in spending on new school places and insist help is now more focused on areas of greatest need. One positive point from the day before is that the school system is still managing, for the time at least, to find places for pupils who want them. But as the baby boomers fill our playgrounds in ever greater numbers, that pressure will grow with them. Luke Walton, BBC News. Let's hear from our correspondent Duncan Kennedy, the primary school in Reading. As you can see, they're obviously gearing up, entering into the spirit of Red Nose Day. Duncan. This school, is this school is typical of the problem we're facing here today. Uh, massively subscribed, extremely popular. In the past couple of years alone, they've had to find 60 extra places to meet that demand. What have they done here? Created this, a temporary couple of classrooms in the playground. Prefabricated, not a brilliant solution. Ken McDaniel is the head of education in Reading. Why are we getting this massive extra demand? Reading has been a very popular location for people to come and find work in the southeast. We're seeing now those people taking work and starting families in houses where we weren't expecting to see families because of the economic conditions there now in that area. Shouldn't we have seen this coming, this extra demand? In Reading, we saw an increase coming, and we spent £25 million since 2009 to buy growth as the Office of National Statistics has told us is larger than we've seen in forever. We're still two and a half thousand pounds, two and a half thousand places short. Temporary accommodation like this prefabricated classroom is not the answer, it's not the long-term answer. It's not the long-term answer. The use of the temporary space enables us to ensure that every child goes to school and that's what we're committed to doing. But we're able to use the funding that the government's announced to be able to deliver permanent places for our residents. Mr. Daniel, thank you very much indeed. And Kevin actually tells me they might have the funding for the extra places at this particular school. He also tells me it's not just a question of numbers, off stem rates. This school is outstanding. Thank you. The plan to build a super fast railway through the middle of England is still on track. The government wins the latest court. It is a convincing decision by the judge justifying the government's policy on high speed rail. It means that we now have from the judge a green light to move forward with the project subject to the Parliament of the It is a significant victory for the government. This court case really has a potential to cause some problems. It's going to cost more money. It will even delay the whole project for a couple of years. Well, that is not now going to happen. But their opponents haven't given up yet. We're almost certainly going to appeal, particularly the issue that the government hasn't made a decision, which I think is a very bizarre judgment in our view, uh, and clearly needs to be appealed. And I think we'll look very closely at the issue of the The judge did find fault with one important part of the government's scheme, saying so consultation on compensation wasn't fair to
Imran Mahmoud, one of them, had spent a year in Pakistan where he thought to receive terror training and also possibly fought in Afghanistan. But the other two are more unlikely would be terrorists. Jahangir Alon, also known as Badu Khaled, is a former police community support officer who worked in London. He had dreams of becoming a chief inspector of police. He later made a video renouncing his police career. Uh, he was arrested in his home close to the Olympic Stadium just weeks before the Olympic Games last year. And the third defender.